Local coverage you can count on continues with Glenn Marini's Sports Report. Sports coverage you can count on. As of last year, June 2nd is now officially Lou Gehrig Day around Major League Baseball, the sport honoring one of its greatest players and greatest ambassadors. Nicknamed the Iron Horse, Gehrig is well known for his consecutive game streak that stood for years and was eventually eclipsed by Cal Ripken Jr. But who held the record for consecutive games played before Gehrig? The answer, that would be Northeast Indiana's own Everett Scott. The Bluffton Natives total of 1,307 games in a row, still third on the all-time list. I think he's certainly underrecognized. He he should have been considered for the Hall of Fame at some point. Everett Scott certainly fell into that category. From June 20th, 1916. To May 6, 1925, there was no player more dependable than Everett Scott. A slick fielding shortstop for the Boston Red Sox and then the New York Yankees, Scott played in 1,307 consecutive games, more than doubling the previous Major League record of 577 games in a row. Ray Birch is the author of the definitive biography on Scott, for the Society of American Baseball Research. He was one of those classic players, which you don't, I don't think you really see that player today, um, who was truly a no-hit all-field player. Now you don't see that. The second baseman, the shortstops are all, I mean, swinging for the fence. <laughs> there's no, there's none of that kind of small ball attitude. Scott graduated from Bluffton High School in 1909 and married his high school sweetheart. His name now adorns the field where the current Bluffton Tigers play. Tim Garrett was Bluffton's head coach in 1997 when they named the field after Scott. I think in a small community, you know, you, you try to bring back or bring alive the history that we have not seen and just kind of bring that to the forefront of someone from a small town can make it big if they work hard enough and get the right breaks. And I think that's something we wanted to shed light on the community. Scott won four World Series titles, three with the Red Sox, one with the Yankees. While he hit just 249 for his career, his calling card was his glove, and he led American League shortstops in fielding percentage seven straight seasons. Well, they could see that they had a talent here. Uh, with the, the, the article said that, uh, you know, you could have sat on first base with a, uh, uh, you know, rocking chair and quite a ball without moving because he was so accurate. Scott served as captain for the Yankees from 1922 to 25. There he was teammates with Lou Gehrig, who eventually broke his record, and roommates with the legendary Babe Ruth. Nicknamed Deacon, the Yankees were hoping some of Scott's serious demeanor would rub off on the debaucherous slugger. He was a card player, and somehow he had Babe Ruth's number when it came to that. <laughs> Ruth lost a lot of money on those train trips going back and forth. When you think about it, it just seems like a very odd couple. He could kind of bring people together, and that was a good thing. He was very small in stature. He was only about 5'8", 145 pounds, but playing every day. And he was kind of the calming force on a team with, it was full of superstars. But yet he was so well respected by his teammates that uh, they looked to him for leadership. The press in New York would go both ways. They would, they sometimes they would be, you know, he get get him out of there because he's he's not doing his job. And another side say, let's keep this thing going. And that's what you, I think that's what you get in New York. From what I can, to this day, I think <laughs> you get that. <laughs> After Scott retired, he turned his attention to his other love, which was the sport of bowling. He owned two prominent bowling alleys here in Fort Wayne, competed professionally, and reportedly rolled 51 300 games in his career. He also wrote a children's book about baseball entitled Third Base Thatcher. The book right here was published in 1923. Pretty cool guy. I'm Glenn Marini, and that is your local sports report.